Welcome to a new episode of Running Out of Space. Today I'm talking sneakers, which is something I could talk about for hours. It's an obsession, maybe even an addiction of mine that is a hard beast to manage. There are never enough colorways or limited editions to satisfy me. Scoring pairs are usually anxiety-filled pressure boilers, and the prices are straight up disgusting. Collecting sneakers has its glory, but will ultimately break your heart because it doesn't matter how bad you may want it, you just can't have it all. But it doesn't stop me. I love sneakers, and I love seeing all the boxes stacked in my closet. I love the chase, and especially the feeling I get from wearing fire on my feet. So does today's guest, Dan Levy. He's a stand-up comic, TV writer, showrunner, and also a big-time sneakerhead. Check it out. Honestly, now that I'm back, like, in real life, I feel like I'm actually, like, wearing stuff again, like normal clothes and just sort of enjoying my, enjoying the stuff that I have, you know? Like, there's no reason to, like, right now cop some new shit because I've just been, like, building a collection of stuff over yeah. the course of the pandemic so i really just uh but i'm still like not seeing anyone i'm just like out even today i was like you know i got like my my royal ones polished ready for the streets and i realized uh -huh. i'm just wearing them into my own office by myself and then going home so it's yeah it was a waste i stepped in like dust it wasn't great but anyways how about you what, have, what did you get so i've actually been pretty lucky on sneakers to tell you the truth, I've hit on like the last I've hit on like three big uh, Jordans recently, which is cool because like I never hit um, yeah. Other than that. I'm like I haven't really been buying. I make it a point not really to buy stuff off StockX. So if I miss out on retail, I'll um, I'll kind of just pass, you know, like very, very like I bought like one or two things on StockX. But like if it hits there, it's usually like just overpriced and just not worth it. And I always like yeah. at, at this point I've been collecting sneakers so long that like, I know something's going to else is going to come up that I really want. And there are some things that I find myself going back to and like really kind of beasting over, but nothing really I, just if I can get it like retail is a celebration, you know? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, we, we talked about this before, but like, you know, you're old when like shoes are getting like retro that you already bought, you know, like the re-release yes. of the re-release, you know, like the military fours that are coming out. Like, yeah. I remember getting those at the time was a really big deal to get them retail. You know, I remember I stood in line outside Nike town in Boston and just got them. I got there at 7 a.m. There's probably like 15 people. This was like 2001. And that was like whatever. the first retro of those, right? Or maybe that was the, the first second, retro. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. So the second one's coming out now. And I, and what, what I tend to do is I tend to get upset when they're being re now, that's my biggest problem with like the sneaker industry in general, at least for like true like collectors or like true, like, you know, sneaker heads, if you will, yeah. is that when they release these shoes, it devalues sometimes what you already have. So it's frustrating, you know, when you're sitting on like, you know, the, the grapes from what year is the, gra the grapes from like, you know, the, let me look the exact date. So I don't find oh, it right in the closet. I like this. Yeah. In the closet. Cause I don't want to get stuff wrong. That's my, that's, that's when I stress out, you know? So yeah. like when you look at, like, look at these. I know it's not a video podcast, but if you see, like, like all the cracking and stuff of these shoes. Uh -huh. And these, I remember when I got these in, where is the year? 2006. So I got these. I stood in line and get them in 2006 in, in Englewood. And um, there were guys on um, in line who had guns. And they were like, and the guy next to me is like, I don't think it's worth it. Like these guys have burners. That's what they said. And I was like, what's a burner? And he was like, let's leave. Yeah. So then we, we left. And so I, and I had them on hold too, but it was just, oh. it was so early and you know, it's not worth dying, you know? So then, so then I basically met another guy in line who gave me his number. I ended up buying these on the street corner of Fairfax and, and Melrose, just cash 200 bucks, which is like nothing now in <laughs> terms of, you know, that's not even retail anymore. Not even retail. And these, so anyways, these were sort of like the grail to me, these grapes, because I didn't have the Nike Air in the back, but I love them so much. And then when they re-released them, 
I just got so bummed because it like lost all of like the you have the you know, too? yeah and I had the re-releases yeah but the re-releases th- th- this which was the year was let's see the year here I can't even see the year this this year they were re-released in 2012 so six years later they came out yeah. the worst leather ever that's ever been put yeah. on a seat was these and then they re-released them again like three years ago was the fresh prince with no laces and there's nike airs on the back but it's like like it's like whack who's wearing no laces i mean i know it's like a thing for fresh prince but but it just was weird because they already had like the bel airs the five bel airs that came out which were really great yeah. but those weren't you know associated with will smith so then anyways let me see the, even... let me see the 06 pair the let me see the 06 pair, are those wait no the, the ones you stood in line for in oh, yeah. englewood yeah. Was that 06 yeah, or what is it? What is that? Oh, when did those first come out? Or when were those retro? These are 2006. Yeah. So uh, can you wear those still? Or are they too cracked up? No, no. I can wear them. But the problem is I used to. I've changed the way I buy sneakers now. Where I used to always buy. I'm a size 11 and a half. I used to always go 11 and a half or 12. Yeah. And a lot of times I could get 12. So I have so many 12s because I get to get them. And yeah. they don't fit. And as Jordans have gone, they've gotten bigger and bigger. Yeah. So now if I buy... Like the perfect fit for me, except for in fours, is 11. Like I wear size 11 in Jordans most of the me time. Too. But all these are like 12. So I will, I could wear these, no problem. But um, but they're just, they're definitely beat up and really not great. Yeah. But, I, but I'm like waiting. Go, go on. What I'm waiting, waiting for? For, for the Nike Air to come out. Like that's, like yeah. I think like the true grapes with the nice leather, with the Nike Air on the back would just be, the greatest shoe ever released but you know now these people they they don't even care they want they want like you know these ridiculous collabs that are cool but they're not as cool as like an original like like i was the most excited for like the maroon sixes when jordan released those with the nike air on the back yeah and for some reason because they were never re-released i was in my head it was going to be impossible to get. And I put my, my name in like every raffle, like all across LA. And I won every single one because no one cared about these shoes. And then I, <laughs> then I had too many maroon sixes. I was like, I don't need five pairs, Yeah. but I was so paranoid. Then I tried to sell them. No one wanted them. So I have one that I always wear. And then I have just one to save, but I don't do that all the time. And you know, what's funny is that these, like the, the grapes and like the maroons, when those first came out, like not retro, like when they first came out, they were kind of the late colors to, to drop. It was like six, eight months, maybe even close to a year after the original, like when they first came out, like it would yeah. always be like the, the white color comes out first and then like it was like the red and black or then it was just like the straight black. The, the grapes, the, the, the grape colorway stuff and the maroons, like those came out like way after the first pairs. And it's so odd it's actually fitting that those are those are so coveted now because at the time it was always like they always kind of like right. I remember when they came out when I was a kid they kind of felt like the afterthought like they were kind of old sneakers by the time like the great pair came out or like the maroon pair came out or like remember like the ones that had um they were red and black like there were fives and they were red and black but they had the twenty three on the side yes so those weren't those weren't like the original pair to that was like fourth down the list or something like that yeah but it turns out like yeah, those yeah. are the ones fire red, fire red fives with 23 in the back i mean those were so so sick i remember when those came yeah. out like i i remember the and for me like the whole idea of like collecting sneakers and vintage t-shirts for me all that stuff is it's all nostalgia you know so yeah. for me like i think of sneakers as something that i always wanted could never get you know and like these shoes just like bring me back to a specific time in my childhood when I was like, those shoes are so great, yeah. you know? And, uh, and that's why, um, that's why you kind of obsess over them because they're like forever ingrained in your brain. So like when you talk yeah. about, like, I have to like, it sounds like a sickness, but I guess it is. But sometimes what I have to do is I need to like spend like a cleansing period where I unfollow like every like Instagram thing that is sneaker related for like a period of time so i'm not just like getting 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 because i'll just sort of like it, i i feel like it's probably it, it's definitely like it's got to be like addiction stuff because then i'll be like all right i've been good for a month and then i'll follow everything i'll be like i'm gonna buy everything and then it's like all of a sudden it's like this insane amount of boxes coming to my house and i'm like what did i do do you think that's um 
a way of you kind of remembering why you're into sneakers in the first place. Like you get, it seems like Instagram is really quick to get wrapped up in the hot stuff because people are really good at taking photos and there's stylists that just like make the shoe pop off. And it just looks a lot of stuff like looks so good. And then you get it in hand. You're like, yeah, these are cool, but like, you know, whatever, I don't really need them. Do you think like what you were talking about just now about unfollowing people, like it's a way for you to kind of reconnect with your passion for sneakers in the first place. Yeah. And also there's a lot of amazing Instagram um, people who are like, you know, OG burst, like some of these people who only, only care about like the original, like OG, like sneaker. There's a lot of people who are like obsessed with like Agassi or Hirachi, or I follow a lot of like ACG people, you know, and they're, it's sort of like niche in sort of the, because, because sneakers are so mainstream now, you know, it used to be like this very specific thing where you could bond over someone, you know, and you could meet someone and be like, dude, I love your sneakers. And then, you know, that person is cool, but now you can't because now anyone could just go on sock X and buy it. And that's why like moms are wearing Yeezys. It's, it's not nothing yeah. against the moms and the Yeezys, but it's like, it's more now just a thing that you could like buy and sneakers were never that way. It was always like, you got to know, you know, so that that's what sort of, I feel like I've done lately in terms of just like why I like sneakers to begin with. It's like that, like original, like late mid to late nineties, sneaker culture the athletes that wore them yeah. and just that time you know nike in general you know like when yeah. when th- things were popping really you know uh yeah like 99 98 that was like when the retro started happening around 99 yeah the retros the first retro was 99 that was the but one i feel like yeah i feel like i became like aware I, I was very aware of things by by the late 90s because i mean it was you yeah. know michael jordan was that whole yeah because like at the time for me my first pair of jordans were sky jordans but it was like i was a young boy but then like you know i would just wear whatever uh my sneaker love really like honestly dude it was stride right like getting a pair of sneakers with like it started with like a pair of sneakers with like the lone ranger on them and i was like yo these are great and then from there it just kind of i just always loved sneakers I was fortunate enough to kind of get Jordans and stuff in high school, Agassiz. I played tennis and, you know, like I kind of, I had a divorced, my parents were divorced. So I kind of was one of those kids that wear like his dad oh, and stuff. Got and, all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I never really saw it as collecting them. Like I, I would wear them out. I would beat them up and then I would just like throw them away after a while, you know? And plus like, you're, you're like my, once my foot settled in, uh, I didn't even collect then it was by that time it was, I moved on to like campus or like whatever the beastie boys were wearing or like skate shoes or whatever. But yeah. then, yeah, around like 99, not even then I would say around Oh one, I saw some dude out here in LA. It was a store called, um, blends. It was like in little Tokyo and this dude was wearing dunks and like, they were just the dopest color. And like, right then I'm like, yo, I like the, the, the spark for Nike's like reignited. And then it was it full on collecting. Oh yeah. Like, talk the whole nine. So that's probably why when I started like collecting. Oh yeah. Stickers. When was it for you? Yeah. Same started- with me. It was for me it was when I moved to um, Boston. I was just really into like shoes in general, you know, like I, I similar, like, thing is you like I was really into sneakers in high school I didn't I didn't have divorced parents so I didn't get a lot of them I got a pair of the maroon sixes yeah and I got a pair of uh, Reebok pumps cross trainer tennis those were tennis dope. pumps the Michael Chang ones. Michael Chang ten- and those, the, the Michael Chang pumps were so sick yeah and yeah. I love those and then I, re- I rebought them you know like I don't know 15 years ago yeah. and uh they're not <laughs> they're not as cool as I remember there's they're so <laughs> chunky the pumps yeah. Um. But but they're so cool. They're like they always are. They're very nostalgic. Those, those shoes for me. The inside but of the then, tongue on those was so satiny and soft. Was it like that on the yeah. retro, or did was did they lose that part? They no no. They I think that was on the retro. Yeah. Um. But uh. But yeah. And then I then it was really when I met um I, I met a guy in in college who was from L.A. and was just really into sneakers and he had the the first release of the the threes and i went to his i went to visit him in la and i saw his closet and he was like 
I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I've been collecting sneakers. There's a place called Sporty LA that's amazing. Yes. And um, and that was when like Sporty LA was the only sneaker store in yes. on Fairfax, which is hilarious to think of. Yeah. But during that time when I first came to LA, there were these like little sports stores like on Third Street that just had the Nike accounts that would get the shoes. You know, yeah. you could like, they were like secretly getting like the Heineken dunks. They were getting all these things. It was yes. before the, the boom, you know? So there was yeah. these little sport shops like like um uh what's it called in um in in the valley uh the the surf shop val surf val surf was a place that they had a great sb account yeah that's where i got mine yeah yeah yeah. so that was a place you would go you can't do that now but like when i came to la that was happening it was like heineken dunks and people were, were really into um into all the singers. I already got the military fours when I was in Boston. I was already building like a sort of a collection of shoes. And, um, but it was like, so early. you were, yeah. And it was have more than one pair. Like were you, were you? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I them? was brush. I was using a toothbrush to clean them every time I wore them. I had Lysol wipes pre COVID yeah. and I would just, <laughs> I would always just wipe down the bottom of a shoe every single time I'd wear it. Yeah. I'd come home, I take the bottoms and I just wipe it with, with, with a Clorox and then Lysol wipe. And then I take a toothbrush and the sides, put it back in the box and like wrap it up and put it away. Like yeah. it was just like, I was like crazy OCD about it. And then just kept on like, you know, just kept on going. And then I just would just get more and more into stuff. And then, you know, eventually it was always the same, you know, I've gone through so many phases, but like, it's been consistently Nike and Jordan's. Um, and you know, like as we talked about like the air tech challenge, all the Agassi stuff, I've, um, I love all like the air Moab stuff, but you know, there was definitely periods as we've talked about, like where I got, you know, unfortunately sucked into the off white Nike yeah. world. I got, you know, I went a little too far with like, you know, I had like the ones in the Prestos, but then I got, you know, the all white Prestos. I just kind of got really into like that orange tag. I don't know. I just got sucked into it. I apologize. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, <laughs> And then also Adidas, you know, there was what I really liked. There was that period a couple of years ago, too, where, you know, the boosts were just super comfortable, you know, and they were yeah. just like they look cool and they were just really so comfortable. Yeah. And I remember going to visit um, like my friend works at Nike. We went to Nike campus and they talked about how they actually Nike was presented with the ultra boost and they passed on it and Adidas grabbed it. You mean so like there the was technology a, like the technology? Oh, so there was a world that like Nike could have had the boost, but right. I still love those. I mean, I, I, I have like the Kith Ultra Boost, which I think are amazing. And yeah. those shoes are still really comfortable, but I sort of, you know, I feel like I sold a lot of those shoes and I sold a lot of, you know, the, the early aughts stuff yeah. that I had. And I've sort of gotten more into just, just the, just the Nikes that I want to wear and the Jordan, the Jordan ones. I, I always think about this. Like if I could like get rid of all the shoes, what would I keep? And I think it'd be like the ones probably all my, ones. Like the Union, you know, I like my favorite shoe. I think so it's like the, you know, it's like our generation's Chuck Taylor. How soon were you wearing kicks on stage during your stand up sets? Was that something that was off the jump? Were you always talking about that type of stuff? Yeah, it was like imme- I was immediately doing it. You know, I was like immediately wearing a lot of this, like sneakers all the time on stage. Like, and this is when I was cleaning my shoes. So I was always wearing bright white, you know, Jordan 10s on stage. Just like the most like just everything you could think of. I was other. I, I shot a special in the Spazikes, you know, like I was yeah. just like Spazikes. I call them Spazikes, but the Spazikes. Yeah. And yeah, people would just like always. You know, people made fun of me at first, but now it's like, that's all people wear is like yeah. Jordans and every comedian's like, check out my shoes. And that's like a thing now. Yeah. But like that, I remember like going like to like the improv and, and people um, and Daniel Tosh, the comedian who's so funny, was sort of like, uh, nice shoes, man. Like making fun of me. And I was like, these are cool. Right. Yeah. They're my fours. I got them on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, I always wore sneakers. You know, I did jokes about it. I wore, you know, there was one time I was trying to write a whole bit about like, you know, I judge you by the sneakers you wear and I'd go through like, you know, a dozen sneakers and shoes and then just make fun of a person for wearing them. It was a very specific bit. It didn't last long, but I thought it was great. It was <laughs> like, if you're wearing New Balance, you're definitely from Colorado. I don't know. It didn't really make any sense. <laughs> Do you judge people now for their sneakers? Um, no. Cause like I said, now, now you can't tell, you know, now, now, now you can't really tell. I mean, if someone's wearing a very specific 
sneaker, you know, that is not like, you know, a shoe you just get on stock X for $650. Yeah. And you know, you know, like a, an, an, or like, I, I love like the, the air Moabs. And that was like the shoe that I got for my birthday this year was like the purple and Brown, you know, and I love those. And those only got released in not in the nineties and then 2015 super limited. So yeah. they're not like a, a hot shoe or a hype shoe, but I love those shoes. Yeah. And hard those to are wear. the kind of sh- they're hard to wear yeah. with the spandex out, like the neoprene thing. It's they're hard to pull off. It's very hard to wear. They get very warm. Yeah. You know, I can't decide, do I wear them with shorts? Do you wear right. them with pants? You know, I love them, but they're they're not like you, you're really just supposed to wear them hiking in the 90s. It's really right. when you're supposed <laughs> to wear them. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, sometimes you see people who like get it, and you're like, okay. Yeah. What's yeah. Up? Um, how many pairs do you think you have right now? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I like you, I've sort of bought and sold so many throughout my sneaker collecting years. I don't know. I would say I probably have like, like a hundred now. Yeah. You keep them all in this closet that I'm looking at. I keep, I keep them all in the closet and then I have like a, a, a sneaker travel bag with like three shoes. Mm-hmm. And then I have like three just randomly in, in the garage. I try to keep everything like in, in the closet, but yeah, this is probably the, the least amount of shoes I've ever had. You're all nice and organized. I am just bursting out of my closet. <laughs> yeah. Well, like- I'm trying, if, but if you look down, like there's shit everywhere. I'm not really <laughs> like, it's, I have this. Yeah. But if you look, I can just show you like it's it's yeah. a mess like on the floor, you know, it's like uh-huh. there's just shoes everywhere. You don't keep the boxes, so, huh? You don't keep the boxes? No, I do. I I just I I go here's the thing. Like I go back and forth. There's some shoes I just go, you know what? If I keep them out of the box, I'll wear them and I'll put them on. Yeah. And and some shoes like cuz I have all these over here too. You know, some some shoes huh? I like will just keep in the box, but I don't know, for me and even though I'm sort of Right now I'm in the moment where I don't want to sell any of my shoes. You yeah. know, I'm sort of like, you know, I just want to wear everything. But because I've done this for so long, I just know that if I ever do decide to sell a shoe, I want to have the box. Mm-hmm. But but certain shoes I will just commit to wearing, you know, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm never going to sell these shoes. I'm just going to yeah. like, you know, these yeah. shoes I'm going to wear. But I don't know. Like I, I made the mistake I, we talked about, but I, I have like, the, I got the from that same guy, Josh, who was the guy who originally got me just like kind of into the sneaker collecting world. Um, he hooked me up with the union guys. So I get, you know, I get the, the, the sneakers when they come out or whatever. And it's, it's amazing. Um, and I have the fours and the fours are the one that like, I don't, I mean, the, the, the union ones are the greatest sneaker ever, I think, but the fours, the color, I don't know. I just feel like it's not like, perfect for me and i can't decide what to do and then i cut the tongues because i don't like how they fold the tongues yeah so i cut the tongues the tongues pop up which i think looks cooler but then my friend was like you're ruining it and that's like the, that's like their like point and i was like well <laughs> can you fold them back over like that once they're cut yeah i'm sure i they could stick up. Show you. The, the the packaging on the, on the fours the packaging is amazing but see i see i just opened it up i think it looks yeah. cooler open yeah, I like Don't it. Don't you think? Over. I personally like to fold. You do? Over. Yeah, it looks different. Just because it, it kind of looks bootleg. It looked like a bootleg Jordan. Like it looked kind of like a weird skate shoe for me. I mean, they're they're sick. Regardless, they did a great job. You do like them? Oh yeah. And once once the bottom starts getting all scuffed up, it's gonna look even better. Like those shoes are meant to be beat up. That's what's cool about Jordan right now is like they're kind of understanding like dead stock is like not really that cool looking. And it's kind of going back to when it was kind of pointing back pre Nike talk when like and this is kind of circling back to what I was talking about, like not having a collection like you wear one, you beat it up to hell and then you get another one. It's kind of getting back to that, like people are really rocking their Jordans beat and it's kind of looking really good. Yeah, no, it's. It's awesome. Like one of my favorite shoes ever is the Space Jams, but the yeah. 2000, 2009, because when they came out in 2015, I believe like the stitching was was weird on the patent leather. Okay. But the the re-release of the Space Jam uh, uh, 2009 fits so perfect and so snug and I've worn it so much. And so like it is beat up. And it's actually my second pair of 2009 because I realized that that's the best shoe. Uh-huh. And then I went to 
white club and i was like i'm looking for a 2009 and they were like confused because they had the new re-release but the stitching if if um if you look you could see it's like you could see the stitching on the outside of on the tongue yeah in in the 2015 or whatever it is 2009 it's black so you can't see it it's so crazy how meticulous sneaker heads get it's like right brain stuff it's really <laughs> it's really really minute it's mental illness is what it is yeah. but but those <laughs> shoes look amazingly beat up what are your top 5 right now oh, i don't even know well the air max 95 they got re-released this year uh -huh. so i got those which i love i love I would say the the Moab, the OG, you know, which uh -huh. my, my birthday shoe. That's two. I would say the 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 one, the Royals, the Jordan Unions, the blue and yellow. Um, I've been wearing these a lot, and these, the you know, the lows, the Travis Scott Jordan one, which is a little like too hypey for me, but I will say, the color way is so great. Like I just have a Scott Jordan one lows. Travis Scott Jordan one lows. They just are. And they just like, they just look good, you yeah. know? And I don't even like Travis Scott so much. <laughs> like I'm like, I like, you know, respect him, but I'm not like a fan, you right. know, like a huge fan, but like, I just like those shoes. Um, And I don't know. I don't know what else. I mean, I, I got, I picked up, I picked up these on purpose that the, uh -huh. The sixes, um, maroon six, yeah, is and or cardinal. Wait, what are they like, called? I forget. What are the maroon? What are they? Cardinal, Car Carmine, Carmine, right? Carmine sixes. Yeah. The Carmine sixes got re released this year. I actually have the 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 second, the, the first re release too, yeah, but I've never worn them and they're like so dead stock and they're so old, yeah. So I was like, let me get these. I got them in Florida on retail because Florida things just sit. And they have a little defect, a factory defect, because they're like, they got a little, the red, like stained a little bit, the sole. So it was a uh -huh. little bit pink. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to wear, I'm just going to beat them up. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. So there's something freeing about getting a shoe that is great, but has a defect. So you know that whatever you do is not going to be worse than what the factory did. Yeah. So mentally, yeah. like I threw this box away and I was like, I don't need the box. I'm just going to town with them. So I'll wear them all the time. I like these. You painted yourself in a corner, so to speak. You said, you, "Yeah, you, you chat. You gave yourself the challenge." I get it. Yeah, you have to and sometimes, saw, or else you're never going to wear them. I know, and I saw you wear the uh, your your sixes with your union pants, and that looks so good. But I did the same thing with these. Nice. <laughs> no, that's the look. That's, the union is stuff the is look. they the union like they just know. It's not so, like they just know the style like they really yeah. like they really ha had that like how do i say this they they really had the styling down um and and in in a forward thinking way they weren't just oh. recalling old retro clothes old retro colorways like they were thinking ahead of it it's almost like a retro futurism and they just have been nailing it the Jor the union jordan stuff is just phenomenal and you don't even, it's like you don't even need to have the sneakers just the clothes are fly no, the clothes are incredible. Yeah, they I, I I would say that I I think Union is the best sneaker collab period so far. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just and not just the sneaker like you said, just like the the brand collab like the Nike, the Jordan Union brand. Like the clothing is like just so good. Those pants, I can't believe how amazing those pants fit. And there's not even they're like there's no there's no buttons. You just put them on. Everyone's like, "Whoa, what are those pants?" Everyone thinks they're like you know, vintage dress pants. And I'm like, they have a Jordan stitch on the back. <laughs> it's like, this is, this is like a, this is basically a workout pant, you right. know, but they're not it's like leisure wear, yeah. but it's so great. Do you still have a grail? Have you gotten your grail? The, the maroon sixes or is there another, is there a modern grail that you, that you're after? You know, I don't, I, yeah, I think I've gotten like all, all of my sort of, grails just because i've been doing it for so long you know yeah. so there's not really a shoe that hasn't been released that i haven't been able to get at yeah. this point you know i think and also like things have changed so i feel like now like i you know like all the hype stuff like we talked about that is uh, you know other people's grails like i don't even really go for that you know so things that i'm looking for are more accessible they just have to like wait 
you know, and hunt them. Like, I love that, like, the Hirachis, you know, came out again, you know, this year. Yeah. And I, I loved, like, that the Scream Greens came out. And I, Which you know, one? like, that was the last, the Air Hirachi Scream Greens. Oh, like the, fir- like the green, like, yeah, those neon green ones. Those, those the first yeah. ones to come out? Was that the first pair to come out of Hirachis? I, uh, I'm not totally sure. I think, well, there's that amazing picture of, of, um, Jordan wearing the purple and black ones. Uh Um, and I, and that was, that was 91. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I I gotta, we gotta look that up. I, I seem like I I should know this answer, but I don't, but those I want so bad. Like those, those sort of like, for some reason, those like that kind of shoe just like hits me with that. Like, I got to get those. So I went and got those like overpaid a little bit and got them in London early because I was nervous they were going to sell out. But then of course they don't really sell out here because people aren't trying to get them, you know, the same day that like, you know, all this other shit's coming out. It's become very celebrity driven. If a celebrity is wearing them, then they get hype. If a certain rapper is wearing them, then they get hype. But otherwise, you know, that's what's kind of cool right now that I like is like getting the sleepers. That kind of gets me more jazz, like finding a sleeper sneaker yeah. for, for cheap. That's something that like I'm, I get I get kind of more giddy about than like dropping two, three hundred dollars on a pair. Of no, I mean, like or dunks or whatever, you know. Yeah, like I can't believe that the the scream the scream dream um the the scream green Hirachis came out and they can't they come back in their retro box. I know it's not a video, but like yeah. the orange, the yeah. gray, the lines, like it's so sick. And the Air Max threes came out this year in like the original um colorway. Which ones were the threes? The white, black, cool gray, cool gray. Oh yeah, I just call those Air Max nineties. Aren't they just called Air Max nineties? Or are they those are the third? Ma- yeah, the Air Max. I guess technically they're the, the three. Yeah, but yeah, and the fact that these came out this year, you know, in the old box yeah. with the tag, and like people don't care. It's sort of it, it's like who, who are you? You know, <laughs> what, yeah. what are you doing? But <laughs> it's great though. They're so they're they're amazing. They're amazing shoe. Do you feel that you've kind of settled the score for young Dan Levy? Oh, um, yeah, I think so. I think like if I think, you know, 12 year old me would be pretty pumped about like my current my current situation. Yeah, especially because I have all of, you know, I have most of the sneakers that I want and I have every T-shirt that I want to get the concert I didn't go to. (laughs) So that's. That's another conversation, but let's talk about that. Cause I, re- you know, I can connect with that because I was a kid in school that, that had sneakers, but there was, there were kids that didn't. And, um, that, that was like a bummer. That was like a real bummer for them. Um, and it's confusing because like at that age, like you don't have your own money. So like, it's not something that you yeah. can control and you, you know, growing up and, you know, there's so many times when I'm watching stuff on YouTube about sneaker collectors where they're always saying like, yeah, this is like the stuff I couldn't get when I was a kid. Like my parents didn't have the money or like I just couldn't get to the store or so many different circumstances. And I feel like that really fuels sneaker collecting now with a lot of adults. I'm curious if that is the same thing for kids now. I'm not sure because I see a lot of like little toddler kids running around with a lot of heat these days i don't know if that's an la thing or just in general like parents who kind of came up maybe not having sneakers so now they they kind of shower their kids and you know like well um, i think i think it's kind of what we said i think the problem is now it's like well first of all it's la so la is insane so you can't really count la as a a real place but also sneakers are just mainstream now so it's i feel like like people are gonna put their kids in like a little baby in, in in a baby Yeezys, just like they would put their kids in, you know, like overalls, you know, uh, yeah. what's it called? Uh, you Oshkosh. know what I mean? Oshkosh. I just feel like, you know, obviously it's not the same in terms of like the popularity of the brand, but really like sneaker culture is so mainstream right now yeah. that that's what you expect. You know, like you're not going to see someone's two year old in some Moabs, you right. know what I mean? Like, like, you know, or I got my nephew, mars yards i got him baby mars yards when he was born nice and that that was that was awesome because i feel like you those are the kind of shoes too like not not everyone knows you know those are obviously like 
amazing and they came out and now, I feel like they're like hyped now or, or whatever. But those like those kind of things are cool to get, I feel like. But if you're a sneaker collector, that's when you get like your like n- nephew, because also they're not like twenty five thousand dollars like the actual shoe is now. But you know what I mean? Like it's like how much they are now. Are they really that much now? No, they're they're crazy now. I think I haven't checked it lately, but yeah, the one the one I have the adult ones, but they are like speed up. But that was the point of that shoe. That was like the the idea that if you have those shoes, you have to beat them up. Yeah, you know. Well, the one point oh is ten thousand, and the two point oh is fifty four fifty. That's insane. It's great if you have them. Yeah, I have a 2.0. Yeah. Did you, ever I, consi- did you ever consider yourself a collector of sneakers or was it something else for you that you've kind of identified with? No, I mean, I think it's like, you know, I, I, I think it's definitely been, I, I identify as, as a collector, you know, as someone, you know, who's, you know, addicted to it and sort of like, I also, it's different now too. That's the other reason why I pulled back is because, you know, stock X makes it very easy for you to go. I'm just going to buy these right now. Click their mine where for me, the most exciting thing about the sneakers is the hunt, you know, like trying to find them searching for a specific shoe. And that's kind of what was so exciting about it. So I think, you know, I'm a sneaker collector, but I think as I've gotten older, I've got more into like the specific hunt of the shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I would say I'm a collector. I mean, I, I've been so back and forth because I also get frustrated with the sneaker, you know, industry a lot of times and, you know, what it's become and that I want to like not even wear shoes that I want, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll like have moments like, I don't want to be associated. Right. This is ridiculous. You well, know, you don't want to be mistaken. I had a friend of mine. Uh, in, in an earlier podcast, we were talking about his collection of vintage T-shirts, and he was saying we were talking about whether or not he would wear the Target brand vintage looking because they're comic book T-shirts he's into, um, whether or not he would wear the Target brand Marvel Comics T-shirt that looks distressed. And of course, he said no. But as the as the conversation flowed, he mentioned that he asked his wife because he was wearing one of the shirts and he asked his wife if he looked like a cool guy or if he looked like the guy who shops at target and gets the comic book t-shirt. And that was very important because of, um, you know, just the overall look. And that's the same thing when you're wearing sneakers, like, do you look like the hype beast who just bought them on StockX, or do you look like the, the true sneakerhead? Like that's kind of the next level right. of, of the culture there's a lot of shoes that come out that are brand new, that are hype, that are cool. Like I, I have a lot, like a bunch of Yeezys, you know, like yeah. I, 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 I did like those, but like, you can't wear those now, you know, like, like if, if <laughs> like politically you mean, <laughs> Oh no, just, just, just because like, I feel like as a sneaker person, you know, you don't want to wear the same shoes that like, I don't know that, that like the moms are wearing. I don't yeah. know. It just feels like a little bit like, I don't know. It, it's great for like the Yeezy brand and their Yeezy business, but I'm talking specifically, as you said, you don't want to walk down the street and, and seem like a kid who just bought stuff off stock X, you know, yeah. there's something about that. They have, there's an aura to it. There's an aura to somebody that's not true. That's not true to, to, to the attitude of sneakerheads. That's not true to the culture. And I'm not trying to be yeah. like a gatekeeper at all, but like you can just spot when somebody where the clothes are wearing them and they're not wearing the clothes. It's very easy. Yeah, also, if they're if they're very young, you know, sort of yeah. like, when did your mom or dad buy you those shoes? I mean, like, I'm lo- <laughs> like, if I if I if I walk down, you know, Fairfax and I see a high school kid wearing the Nike Air Tech Challenge to Wimbledon that only came out in 2013, I will be like, wow, like, who are you? And how did you find out about those shoes? Because those shoes are so sick. And they're like $500 right now, if you, if you could find them. And that's like nothing compared to like an Off-White or like a Travis Scott or, you know, Yeezy or, what, you know, Union stuff, you know. But like, if you have those shoes, I feel like you kind of like are in the know yeah. more so than anyone who could just go, all right, like, what's the most popular shoe on StockX right now? Let's just like look for fun. The most, the most popular shoe right now is... The Jordan 4 Retro University Blue, right? Uh-huh. Like, I feel like those shoes are, are like, they're cool, but those are a shoe, like, if you're wearing them right now, like, you bought them, 
for the most part, probably resale and put them yes. on immediately and walk down the street. Like that's, yeah, that's just that. And that's fine. But like, I don't want to do that. Right. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> that's, you got to let them sit how. in the closet for a little bit. I'm the same way. You yeah. Them sit in the closet for a little bit. You gotta yeah. Break them like, out. Let them sit. Yeah. And for example, like those shoes, right. The shoes that I talked about, the, the, the Carmine sixes are two hundred three two eighty 280 on stock X. Now, the retro university blues we talked about are 315 lowest, you know? Yeah. So that's what I'm talking yeah. about. So if someone's going to go on stock X and buy them, you know, I mean, yeah, you, you buy their 400 bucks on my size that the, the, the university blues. I'm not going it, to, and like, you don't need to do that, but I feel like that's just what people think they need to do to be in the cult, to be a part of it. Right. Right. Some people just love that baby, that Carolina blue. And I get it. You know, some yeah. people are waiting for that, but it's, it's odd to me because like 10 years ago, if you said, yo, uh, the car mines are coming out and there's going to be tons of them and you're going to be able to get them below $300, people would freak out and they're going to have oh. Nike Air on the back. But then these days with off white and all the collabs that come out, like they kind of just fly under the radar They're you know, and maybe because they're, they're, they, the, the numbers that they sold or, you know, they probably have like they're mass produced, but like whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think about when you talk about like the grail, I will say the one, the one thing that I never got that is my, my, my grail that basically was like when I, what I used to see on when I walk into flight club and I'd see it and be like, ha ah, yeah. is the Jordan defining moments package. Um, yeah. The six and the 11, like, like that was the first like package shoe. Yes. And, yeah. And that I think they released like once maybe, but I'm not totally sure. But Nike um, talk was still a thing when those came out. I remember. Oh, that. it was huge. No, no, it wasn't. You know what? It, it they haven't released. They are. They were. The retail was 296. They came out in 2006. And those, I, I want. I want to find those. I mean, I, I, I would like to get those. I mean, right now they're like you know 1500. dollars But that was a shoe, a package that I wanted, like, it's funny because it's called the defining moments package. And for me, that was like a defining moment, sneaker resale package moment. Cause I was like, holy shit. I don't even, I even hear these came out Yeah, and there was like a glass box. And of course they're 2006, so they're going to be crumbling, but yeah. it's an amazing, that's an amazing thing. And you're not going to see, you know, a kid today who, you know, spent all their money on like the off white stuff last year even thinking about these shoes no no but that's a good i guess it's a good time for like old heads like us now yeah you know? but also at the same time i feel like in like like someone like me and you are not going to spend thirteen hundred dollars in the dmp pack but we will yeah. still judge everyone who doesn't have it <laughs> yeah yeah we mentioned um stock it we're, we're talking about stock x we're talking about getting stuff online and how easy it is but for me there was a time before like the sneakers app before all the companies kind of got their online online uh, game really tight where you had to go and wait online or camp out to get some of these things. So there was like a whole swath of like a whole era where I just didn't get anything because I'm not, the, I've never been the type to go and stand online or like wake up at the crack of dawn and like go somewhere. Maybe it's like the antisocial aspect of me. Maybe it's just the part of me that doesn't like crowds or maybe just not, seeming wanting to look like a follower or something like that. But I was never the type that would ever camp out, never the type to ever just like rush to a store to get stuff. I, I, I lost that on so many things, including which what I hear now, again, looking at stuff on the internet, looking at, at uh, sneaker content on the internet, a lot of people made some good relationships on these lines. So yeah, on one hand, like, you know, like the Gen Xer in me is like, well, F that, like that's lame. But on the other hand, like there are some people that really made friendships and, you know, and wound up getting really hooked up and maybe started their own brand or, you know, made, made kind of connections on these lines. Were you the type to do, to go and wait online for stuff back in the Nike talk oh. for a sneakers app and all that stuff? Oh, always. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I used to, yeah. I used to do that all. I used to go to Nike, Nike town in Beverly Hills all the time. You know, yeah. I, like I said, I went to this place called chic in, um, Englewood. Uh -huh. Um, I used to go to sporty LA. I used to, I, I had a good thing with the guy at sporty LA and I would, you know, I, I would ask, um, you know, put me on a list or whatever. And I, and I'd come and they, they would give me shoes every once in a while, but they, you know, 
they weren't like they had their Nike account, but they weren't like trying to to get necessarily everything. They just kind of got what they got. And then during that time, like in the early aughts, they would get the shoes that you know you wanted. Yeah, um, forty was also but, like yeah, I always I always went went in line, but I I, I like I I ne- didn't necessarily like meet like good friends like waiting for shoes, but I definitely bonded with people early on, you know, yeah. who shared the same interests as me, you yeah. know. Sporty's a, a peculiar one because when I came to town, I got here in 2001, I would, they, a friend of mine immediately said, oh, you got to check out the store. And it was great because they seemed like a store that just had stuff from the time just in the back still. It didn't seem like they were stocking retro stuff. Like you would find some old things that they had dead stock just sitting around. Like there were shoes that were old, like, like, like they were in uh, plastic wrap, like shrink wrap. And it was just literally dead stock from a uh, previous time. But, and they always had like the, the, the um, hard to find colors of Nikes, but they also had like, well, they had like pony. They had like uh, early ASICs and stuff like that. Like they had those kind of off brands too, which is what was interesting about that store. Are they still around? Yeah. Sporty, is Sporty LA still on Melrose right there? They're still around. I heard they own half the block anyways, you know, <laughs> like just in terms of like the buildings. Yeah. So I think like they might not be the most popular sneaker store on Melrose, but I think they own it. They own the one that is. So I think they're fine. That but, was a time. but yeah, they also, they also had, they, they also helped relaunch LA gear. I don't know how invested yes. they were, what the situation was, but they had tons of LA gear, which also was like a, uh, a nostalgia shoe for me in a way. Cause my, my buddy Jason had like, had the shoe with, uh, you know, the, 25 laces coming through everything i thought those were kind of cool and they also would get all the pumps so they were kind of one yes, of these one of these early they were all these mom this mom and pops like old school sneaker store from the 80s that they just like had a thousand like truly if people could understand like they would just like their entire walls were just cluttered with sneakers and you would dig through and be like do you have this this came out like 10 years ago and they'd be like yeah like i remember i got like the air riffs there like they, they had these like very like weird shoes all the time That's but they I'm were saying. definitely not, like, and it wasn't riding like, hype train at all yes and it wasn't like they got them and they're you know the, 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 it was the true definition of dead stock it was dead old stock that never originally sold but they still had it you know Oh, when, when you would say like, do you have us in 11 and a half, they'd be like, yeah, hold on. And then like, they'd be gone for 30 minutes. They take like a truck to a warehouse. They dig through something. They come back and be like, we don't have this, but you want the pumps that came out the same year? I'd be like, okay. Right. Yeah. But they also never, they didn't really have crazy prices. It was like, it, it was very reasonable. Um, yeah. And I think they still have great stuff. I, I pop in there every once in a while. Is um, the one in the, is the, I forget if the one in Sherman Oaks is still around. No, right. That closed. I think that one closed. They also they also had they used to have a store, also like Pasadena, um, East you know East Melrose, like just a little up few streets up. Uh-huh. But but yeah, now like Cool Kicks are around too, and like all those stores are 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 over there. What's your take on those stores? I I, I appreciate them. I think like you know Sean Witherspoon at Round Two is like a true like you know sneaker head and like you know vintage collector so i think yeah you know i think they have like really cool stuff and they get amazing stuff but the prices are insane but that's just like the business model you know it's like it's just a resale market yeah but i i think like their vintage t-shirt store is amazing and and they get good stuff but the problem is it's you know people go there to just you know get the shoes the hype shoes you know so i don't think you know a lot of times they don't necessarily have what i'm looking for except in the clothing yeah. side of things but i've sold them tons of stuff you know so you will you do you will will you resell to uh put cash in your pocket or will you resell to get something else what's kind of your strategy with that it depends sometimes i go through these moments of being like oh, i gotta get rid of all the stuff and i'll go and i'll sell everything and i'll be like ah, oh, that was dumb and then I, then i've done these things where i've sold a bunch of shoes and then a year later i'm on ebay rebuying the shoes that i sold yeah at a loss <laughs> what <laughs> is that what, what what's what's the mindset with that i think what happens is i will for example like all my agassiz the air tech um you know, uh, my Bo Jackson's, all my air trainers. I had all of them like 10 years ago. Yeah. 
And I wasn't really wearing them that much, you know, but I, I had, especially the Bo Jacksons, I had like the OG colorway. I had the, the Raiders black. I had, you know, the black and blue. I had, for some reason, I was really into like, I mean, I, not for some reason, I love Bo Jackson. So I'm as into all his shoes, you know? Yeah. And, you know, Air Trainer Max was like really the first Nike cross trainer shoe. So I just, I don't know. I just like loved it. And then I just like, you know, I wore them a bunch. And I just kind of stopped wearing them and they were just like beat up. And I was like, I don't need them anymore. And then, you know, what happens is I, sell them, you know, give them away. And then, you know, a few months later, I'm walking down the street. I see one person wearing them. I'm like, God damn it. Why did I give away? Yeah. I had the air tech challenge, like the, you know, with the, the lava, like I had these yeah. from what year Th this year is from, these are from 2013, but I had like the 2000, whatever the first, first retro of the Agassi was because you know what happened with Agassi and Nike, which was incredible is that, you know, they had the, the the sneakers then agassi wasn't an athlete anymore so they couldn't make the shoes yeah then he re-signed with nike and started re-releasing everything again. and then you're the one who called me in the middle of the summer like hey are you getting this agassi this agassi capsule and i was like what are you talking about and then i opened up nike.com and i was like i'm getting everything yes yes <laughs> and i do you think that was this, too little too late on that because i know like the agassi clothes were like the hot like for collectors you could not find those and then oh yeah I Oh, a hundred percent. I think came like, out and it was like, a, they, they, they came out and no one cared. No one cared because it was, but, but we cared, you know, yeah. like I cared so much. I got everything, but I think that's because people don't realize, you know, like people tennis isn't, isn't, isn't hyped up. The Agassi shoe isn't hyped up. Um, but I, I don't even play tennis. I just loved everything about Andre Agassi yeah. and those shoes for me, just like represented like summer you know and like i just remember like all my friends i didn't even have them all my friends had them. i remember seeing like when the yellow came out then the purple orange came out yes. and just that fire tennis ball and i was like oh my god so anyways long story short is i had these shoes the first release and i wore them so much and they were so beat up and i loved the way they looked and yeah. then i was like god in this moment I was like i'm gonna sell everything out of everything and then i regretted it so i rebought them um and now i have warm enough so now they're, they're clean so i need to basically dirty these up that's the end of the story <laughs> why do you think that these designs have endured so long is it because circling back is it because um kids that are adults now didn't have them and they romanticize them or are they legitimately uh, some type of uh visionary design that just endures and it's timeless yeah well i think Tinker is like a genius at Nike, you know, who designed like most of the greatest sneakers of all time. Yeah. I think that it's, you know, 50% nostalgia and then 50% iconic sneakers from, you know, um, ridiculously talented athletes, maybe greatest athletes of all time, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I think that combination just makes an amazing, ridiculous sneaker on top of that just me personally aesthetically like i think those shoes are just so cool and even especially now yeah. with like 90s being like in part of pop culture like these colors you know like the chunkiness the the, the nike air sign like it's just it's just like in a zeitgeist now it's like it never left so yeah. and this the designs are so prolific too like they really are in they they just endured like they just they there's not anything kind of bad about them they, they still look good. Like they, they could have, they could come out today and they'd still be just fire. Yeah, I mean, and just like the tennis ball, like the Agassi, I mean, it's just, to me, it's just like immediate, you know, it's like, you yeah. see that and you're like, this is like immediate nostalgia, immediate, like just an iconic logo. You know, these, these shoes are awesome. And also, I don't know, just the, all the Agassi stuff just fits so well, looks so cool. Yeah. You know, I just wish I, I don't want to, I want to get into playing tennis because I have so much Agassi stuff, but now I'm afraid <laughs> I'm 40. I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah. And I feel like it'd be pretty embarrassing to like tear my ACL, like in like, you know, spandex Andre Agassi short. Well, what <laughs> now they're doing, you have the, the, the younger generation of pro tennis players. Like they're kind of, they have like the new tech on their sneakers, but they're doing throwbacks to the tech challenge designs, which is kind of yeah. cool. I like that stuff. Um, yeah. It's very cool. I played I played tennis when I was a young boy, but I haven't played in a while. Yeah, I was thinking of my, I got I we should play tennis. It'd be cool. I'm trying to get my daughter <laughs> into tennis. Oh yeah, I mean my my, my kid's been playing tennis the whole the whole pandemic. That's been yeah. like 
they do it every Wednesday. I mean, I don't think they're good at all. I mean, they end each tennis lesson with eating candy. So I don't really know what they're doing, but they're, they're happy. It's good to get them on the court, put the racket in their hand. I mean, my daughter's like, I put her in lessons too. She's like, you know, there's some days where she really liked it other days where she didn't, but it's really so important just to get them on the court and get them, you know, just hitting balls or just connecting with the ball or just being there just to hear that their sneakers squeak on the court. It's just all those little details that you kind of want to get them kind of soaking in early. Cause like at this, Absolutely. at this age, they just, they, they don't want to do it. You know, they just, they, nothing organized. They just want to like, you know, be kind of free flowing and free form. So, you know, just as long as you expose them, I suppose is the, is the best way to do it. Um, yep, which yep. I guess this brings us to a good topic. What does your um, sneaker collecting, how does it affect your family? How does it affect your relationships um, early on? Girlfriends, you're married now with a family, you're happily married, but how has your sneaker habit uh, affected your personal life? Well, it's just always been a part of me, you know, since I was, you know, 20, I've been collecting sneakers. So it's always been a thing. It's like, I need a closet with all my stuff in it. I'm going to have a lot of shoes on the floor. I'm going to have a lot of shoes under the bed. That's just how I am. When I first started dating my wife, she was like, you know, seemed very into it, but I think it's just because she wanted me to think she was cool. And like, I got her a pair of like, um, the, the air Jordan sevens when they, that when they first got, remember they released like the air sevens, like they just released the, the old, the ones this weekend, the, the, um, the Flint, but they released like all of them at the same time. It was like, the, the the beige and the the og colorway it was just there were so many and i was just psychotic and i was like i'm gonna get every pair of sneakers that came out today um at nike town and i was like you gotta get these in your size and she's like that'd be cool and then she got them and she never wore them but she bought them and are i was the I thought like she was the so hairs great. are the sevens the hairs yeah okay sevens are the hairs but the hairs weren't released then but yeah that's the that's the silhouette you know yeah but but these they're great so i got them and uh, and then, but then obviously, but then we dated forever, and we're married now. She just says she can't deal with it, and she can't not step on another pair of my sneakers. Yeah. You know, so she 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 is definitely into me selling them, and likes when I talk about sort of like cutting it out and just sort of you know leaning leaning out the collection. But then, but then at the same time, then I also get into t-shirts, which is a different episode, but yeah. that also takes a place too, but it's not as much as sneakers. Is it a conversation when boxes arrive at your doorstep? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. You, you, you got, I mean, luckily I have so many shoes that sometimes I'm able to sneak them in and yeah. be like, oh, cool. I'll just open it. And, and there, I have so many shoes that are I've never worn. So yeah. it wouldn't be weird for me to open up like a brand new pair of shoes in front of her. But yeah, I need to, uh, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> how about you you know with me there's a, there's always been something whether it's like comics or vintage not even vintage i'm sorry like vinyl japanese toys t-shirts sneakers there's all she you know she kind of always kind of knew what she had gotten into from the jump like there was no real sneak attack she kind of thinks i have hoarder tendencies which she, you know, in a sense, she may be right about that. Um, yeah, well, for sure. There's definitely that aspect too of it. Yeah. Um, but overall, I mean, she, she's into it. I mean, you know, like it's undeniable when you have a, a slick pair of shoes on. Um, for her, she, you know, she, there's definitely some eye rolling when a new box comes to the doorstep. Um, right. But on the other hand, she also knows that like with, with her, she buys like fast fashion and like she's gone through the, the, the cycle of like buying a bunch of stuff. And, but then like having a full closet and being like, oh, I have nothing to wear. And I'm like, oh, well, why don't you sell that? But she can't sell it. And then she sees me like, you know, I'll have like some stuff. And like if I don't want it anymore, I could sell it and like I can, you know, make somewhat of a, either a profit or at least my money back. So she kind of gets that angle of it. And she has seen me kind of been be able to um, get a pair of sneakers. And if I don't like them or, you know, get get a, something from Supreme or some other, you know, something cool, you know, that I ended up getting. Uh, she's seen me be able to sell that and not lose any money. So she kind of understands that um, that kind of uh, balancing act that I've been able to kind of um, stay on to kind of keep 
um, keep the habit going, I guess, if you want to call it habit, or the collection going, I should say. Um, right. but yeah, she gets annoyed. Of course. Of course she gets annoyed. Like, you know, it's, it's a, but it's like, you know, whatever. She, she knew what she was getting into. So like, whatever. I'm sure it could be right. much worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. It could be <laughs> opioids. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, she gets, yeah. she gets annoyed. You know, how do you not? After a while, it's like there's so much stuff and so much stuff. But yeah, but that is the thing. Like, I, I do know, like, if I was to go and say, hey, you know, and I, I, I've done that before. I've reached out to this guy. I forget his name. He's like a crazy. He drives around the country buying people's like collections. Uh-huh. And I want I'm like in, in, in the heat of a moment, I would basically was just like, I want to sell you everything. And he's like, for real. And he's like, send me pictures. And I started sending him pictures. And then I was like, I don't want to sell that. I don't want to sell that. I don't want to sell that. And then I was like, you know, I'm not ready. And he's like, okay. Yeah, that's the thing. I've always been good about not buying things that I won't wear or that I won't wear for 10 years. I have a pretty good radar of that now. Um, of not- That's the problem with like some of like the high-end streetwear clothing. Because I feel like that, I have noticed there's been a few pieces that I've bought in the past like seven years. And I'm like, oh, this is not really in style anymore. But for the most part, like- you know, like the hoodies and the t-shirts, Yeah. you know, will, and those union pants will always be good, I think, you know, but that yeah. that's, I've been feeling the same way. I've been like looking around lately, been like, I do want to sell some stuff. I do feel like I have a lot of stuff right now, but I do, you know, love these sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> Wear them to death too. 